the sound of your breath. And start to move the sound of your ujjayi breathing through your spine. Imagine and intend as you find your ujjayi breath that you are starting your breath actually at the tip of the tailbone and drawing the inhale all the way through the center of your spine as though you have a big straw there. Right, a big straw inside and uh, really centralized between the vertebrae. And you're just drawing that breath up through the center of your spine, through the straw. So that your inhale feels like you're slurping through the straw, the, the, the breath from the tip of the tailbone all the way up to the base of your skull. And as you exhale, imagine and intend that you are moving the energy back down from the base of your skull all the way down like you're pouring that exhale out through the spine, out through the tip of the tailbone and back into the ground. Do this breath a few more times. Slurping up that breath or vacuuming up the breath with the throat, right? With your ujjayi breathing from the tip of the tailbone all the way up to the base of the skull. Exhaling from the base of your skull, pour the exhale down your spine. So this, the, the exhale were liquid and it's just moving out like a turbulent river out through the tailbone and into the earth beneath your hips. Keep this going, let's do about three more rounds of this spinal breathing. Make sure that that exhale is turbulent so that there's some energy, some movement some definite flow from the base of your skull down and out through the tip of the tailbone. And as you take your final breath here, as you take your final inhale and exhale here, make sure that your inhale is as long as it needs to be to reach from the tailbone up to the base of your skull and that your exhale is as strong as it needs to be to pour itself all the way out from the base of your skull through your tailbone and into the floor beneath your tailbone. And then take a moment to just let your, let the exercise drop away. And notice how you already are able to find your spine with your mind's eye a lot more clearly, a lot more easily. Right, and then go ahead and open your eyes. We're going to start now just um, with our first, we're actually gonna do one more breathing practice. And our first pose for that will be a seated hero's posture. So if this is an uncomfortable pose for you, you may want to take your pillow, place it either between your thighs and your calves, and kind of sit there. Sometimes that hurts ankles though. So you could also take the pillow and place it between the inner thighs. Walk your knees a little bit forward so that as you sit down, you're sitting on the bolster between your heels rather than sitting on the heels themselves. And from there, we're gonna take the hands to our thighs or even to the lower abdomen. If you're new to this breath, this is fire breathing. And today we're going to do an exhale through the mouth unless you feel like that's a little too iffy with, uh, with the virus, right? Uh, <laughs> to exhale through the mouth. In which case we'll do the same contraction but we'll be exhaling through the nostrils. So again, finding your inhale, take a deep breath in, let the belly fill up with breath. And then exhale through the mouth if possible. Or through the nostrils if you'd like. Right, one or the other. Keep going. And each time you exhale, 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 know that your inhale will come in on its own. So you're just focused on the exhale, exhale, exhale. Also make sure that your exhale draws your navel back towards your spine. So back, 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 back. Let's do five, four, three, 
two, one. Hold your exhalation now. As you release your exhale, take a huge breath in. Now hold your inhale. Try to relax your body so that you're not tensing up to hold your in-breath. And now just let a passive exhale move the last inhale out of your body. We're gonna do that again a little bit faster this time. Take a deep breath in here. Again, make sure the belly expands on your inhale. Exhale. Navel in, 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 in. Keep it going. Make sure you're pulling back, 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 back. Keep it going. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Long exhale here. Hold your out breath. Engage Uddiyana Bandha if you know Uddiyana Bandha. When you're ready to let go of that deeper lock, take an inhale, release the lock. Pause at the top of your inhale and hold the inhale side of your breath as well. And then a passive exhalation, a simple letting go of the inhale side of your breath. Take a moment to again notice how you're feeling. Keeping your mind's eye on your spine. See if you can see the front of your spine a little more clearly. We always look at the back of our spine with our mind's eye, or think of the back of our spine. But look at the front of your spine. That inner engagement toward the front of your spine should have helped kind of polish that up and made it a little brighter and more easy to view with your mind's eye. Easier, I should say, not more easy. So once you have felt that and found that, let's come onto the hands and the knees. Moving forward so that your hands are underneath your shoulders and your knees are underneath your hips. Take an inhale to extend your spine, pull the pelvis back and draw the ribs forward. Exhale to round your back, draw your chin into the soft part of your throat. Do that once again, inhale, spine on extension. And exhale to round your back. Make sure here again you are focusing on your spine. So feel free to keep your eyes closed throughout this, this part of our practice at least. Inhale, pull the pelvis a little further back, draw the ribs further forward. Exhale to round, hugging in. Draw your navel in and up. One more like that. Inhale, extend. And this time really uh, make sure that your neck is also doing the rounding. So bring your chin toward the soft part of your throat. Good. Take an inhale, move into a neutral spine position. Stand up onto the pads of your toes. And as you exhale, move into your first downward facing dog. Stay in your pose. Breathing as deeply as you can here in down dog. You can keep your knees bent here if you'd like. You can walk your legs out, shift into your shoulders or your hips, whatever you would like to do here that allows you to feel freer in your body, even in this position, even at the beginning of our practice. Take another strong exhale here, dive a little deeper. And then we're gonna come back onto the knees slowly, inhaling to extend the spine. And as you exhale, Round your back again. Make sure your abs are strong. Bring your chin into the soft part of your throat. Now take a strong inhale into the back of your body while your back is still rounded, particularly into this lower back area between the top of your pelvis and the lower ribs. Try to puff up that part of your body with breath. As you exhale, round even more. Draw the sit bones towards your knees and draw the, the chin toward the soft part of your throat. Good. Now, standing up onto the pads of your toes, take an inhale to extend your spine. And this time we're going to move into an active child's pose. 
We're going to bring the forehead toward our knees and the knees in toward the forehead. Your shins are parallel with the floor. Your hips are hovering over your heels, maybe six inches above the heels. Please feel a lot of core engagement here. Anytime you engage your core, you're giving your back the opportunity to stretch. Your forehead is moving in towards your shins, I'm sorry, towards your knees. And if you know under our Banda here, make sure you're engaging your throat block as well. Now inhale, straighten out your legs, and exhale, press the heels down for another down dog. Maybe walk your feet out a little wider here, and then just shift your hips side to side or anything that again makes you feel good, right? That allows you to feel freer in your body, more mobile through the spine. After you have taken a few rounds of breath here and down back, take one more strong exhalation, draw navel in and up. Good. And from there, you're gonna drop your knees close to the floor this time without your knees actually touching the ground. So your knees are going to hover above the floor about, what is that, about three to four inches. Your chest is open, your spine is extending. As you exhale without your knees touching the floor, bring your forehead towards your knees and your knees in towards your forehead, grounding your back. Inhale, hover the knees, open up the chest. Exhale, round your back, engage your core. One more time, inhale, shins down, but not touching the floor. We're still hovering. I promise my knees aren't touching. <laughs> Exhale, round your back. And now go ahead and unravel, straighten out your legs and move into your third down dog. Check in with your strong exhalation. Make sure that each exhale is a hollowing out of the belly. Hugging the front of your spine with your abdominal muscles. Take one final exhale here in downward facing dog. Now we're going to walk or jump our feet to the top of our mats. Inhale into your halfway lift. Great job, everybody. Exhale, fold your crown down towards your toes. Root down and begin to rise up. Sweep your arms over your head as you take an inhale. And exhale, bring hands to heart. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, dive forward, folding in. Weight moves forward into the front of your feet. Inhale to your flat back. This time we're going to jump back into a high plank position, high push-up pose, or walk back, and hold high plank here. Folding high plank. Push down to the palms, push back to your heels. Warming up the core temperature of our body by working a little more into our, mu our larger muscle groups. But this doesn't mean that we let go of that core connection. Two more breaths in high plank. Strong exhalation to find the Anabanda. Follow out the lower belly. Take one more inhale in high plank position. And press it back once again to downward facing dog. Once you're in down dog, just shake out any tension in the neck and the head and the shoulders. And then check in with your abs again. Make sure that your abs are supporting the stretch on your lower back. Take a final strong exhale. Dive a little deeper. Rooting down through both feet. Jump your feet or walk your feet back to the top of your mat. Inhale, extend the spine. Keep your hips over your heels here. Exhale, fold your crown towards your toes. Root down, rise up, sweep the arms overhead, take an inhale here. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, reach up and rise up. Exhale, dive forward, keep your hips over your heels as you dive so that your weight moves forward into the fronts of your feet. Good. Folding it in. Inhale, spinal undulation. Bring the hands to the ground. Bend your knees, jump back or walk back, high plank. This time, exhale down to chaturanga. Inhale, up top. Open up. Then exhale, press it back, downward facing dog. And taking another down dog. Slowing the breath down, warming the body up. 
The slower the breath, the more you will notice how connected you can be to your, to the breath itself and to the core, right? When we move quickly, or when we breathe quickly, I should say, we don't really get to move or originate our movement from our center. Take a final exhale here, dive a little deeper. And once you are empty, we're gonna jump the feet back to the top of our mats, take your inhale to extend, and exhale to fold in yet again. Good. This time, bend your knees, weight back into your heels. You're gonna sit down into an Utkatasana here. Pull the pelvis back. Stay in that seated position. And mirroring what I'm doing, you're gonna bring your left elbow to your left thigh, left hand to outside of right thigh. Bring your right arm up and around so that you're grabbing your left inner thigh with your right hand. And then bring the pelvis so that it's not swaying to one side or the other. But so just so your pelvis is pulling directly back toward the back wall. But push down with the forearm and open up your chest even more to the right. Now make sure in this position that you are not allowing your um, neck to do the twist for you. Instead, you're using your core, right, to ring out your entire spine, and your head just follows the torso around. Take a final inhale here, see if you can reach the pelvis back as the chest draws forward, the crown of your head reaches as far away from the tailbone as possible. And now exhale, both hands down. Grab your big toes with the first two fingers of each hand. Take an inhale to extend. Exhale to bring your crown toward your toes. You may need to take your feet a little wider than your hips here. And you may be way up here, right? Where, where this is yoga for stiffer bodies. We may not have our hands to the floor yet. So if you feel like you need to, and you do have something to place your hands on, right? Bring a prop so that you really do feel like you can uh, at least put your hands on the floor. All right, otherwise we are holding on to our toes. We're not yanking or pulling with our arms. We are engaging our core to move into this deeper forward fold. Take one more strong exhale. Beautiful, good. And then bend your knees again. Weight back into your heels. Your feet are about sit bone distance apart. Sweep your arms up. And exhale, take your twist to the other side now. And if this isn't the twist that you like to do in, in, uh, in our Utkatasana, take any other twisting Utkatasana you'd like to take. Just make sure that the pelvis traction is directly back. Your rib cage is tractioning directly forward. We are mobilizing our spine here, starting with our lower back, not with our neck. We're not trying to pull ourselves into the twist with the neck, nor are we pulling ourselves into the twist with that upper arm, right? That's why I like to kind of just take the arm out of the equation. Take one final inhale here. Pull the hips directly back. Beautiful. Exhale, both hands back to the ground. Maybe you can get a little straighter with your legs this time. Maybe we decide that we're going to bend our knees more so that we can feel more of a stretch on the lower back, so less of a stretch on the hamstrings today. Bring your hands now back behind your ankles or your Achilles tendons, really. Your elbows are behind your knees and your forearms are behind your calves. Push your forearms into your calves to begin to straighten out your legs. As the shin bones move forward because of that pressure, start to draw your kneecaps up and move your thigh bones back. Keep your abdominals strong and keep drawing your ribs closer to your thighs each time you take an exhalation. Let your neck relax, shake any tension out of your neck, your head, and your shoulders. So take one final inhale here, extending strongly forward. Flat your palms and jump back and walk back to your high plank. Inhale in high plank. Exhale down to chaturanga. Inhale into your up dog. Exhale, press it back to your downward facing dog. This time, lift your right leg up and reach it back on your inhale. And exhale, draw your knee underneath you. Step your foot through your hands and slide your back toes back even further to the back of your mat. If you do have a block or even a pillow here, I'm going to have you bring that pillow inside the inner edge of your right foot and place your forearms down on whatever that prop is. 
All right, stay with me here. In this position, it's important that you hug both of your inner thighs to midline. Good, and if you feel like, you're, like your right knee is torquing or it feels uncomfortable, turn your right toes out a little bit, but just make sure that you're not uh, sinking into your right outer, the outer edge of your right foot. So you're still hugging to midline no matter what your legs are doing. Good, and then from there, push back through the inner heel of your left foot even more. Push through the inner heel of your left foot. Stay in this low lunge, feel this deep stretch, and make sure that your core, every time you exhale, is engaging, right, around your spine. We're in this deep lunge for just a few more breaths here. Pushing back through the left heel, hugging into midline with both inner thighs. Your back is slightly rounded here. Make sure your abs are engaging. Take one more exhale in this position. Good, and now bring your left knee down to the floor. I'm gonna have you come up so that you are on your kneecap right now for a moment. Your right hand, your both hands really, are gonna come to your right thigh. And you're pushing back through your left heel here. Notice that you're may, you're, you may wanna open up. And instead, right now anyway, we're gonna bring that left hip bone forward. So you may wanna bring your left hand to the back of the left side of the pelvis and just direct your left, sit bone, left hip bone rather forward. Meanwhile, your right sit bone dials back. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, <clears throat> come off of your back knee and push back into a lunge. Breathe here. Now on your next exhale, we're gonna bend the back knee. It doesn't have to be a lot. While you're bending your back knee, push your left thigh bone forward. Inhale, straighten out your leg. Keep this right leg just cemented where it is. Do that two more times. Bend the left knee, contract your glutes and your hamstrings. Straighten out your leg. Keep the left hip bone pointed forward. One more time, bend left knee. Contract your glutes strongly. We don't wanna take this into our knee. Make sure your hamstrings are firing. Straighten out that leg. Beautiful, now bring your left knee all the way back down to the ground, but move forward off of your kneecap. And if you feel like your kneecap is gonna be right there and do it, it cannot move any further forward, take one of your props, one of your pillows, and place it underneath your kneecap so it's really on the muscle fibers above the knee. Move forward. And if you feel like you have a little extra stretch for your quads today, bring your left heel towards your left glutes. Please keep breathing. If you feel like you still have some room, you can do one of two things. Coming forward is gonna get you off of your kneecap for sure, but into some pretty deep sensation. Or you can reach around, you can do both too. You can reach around and take a hold of the inner edge of your left foot with your right hand. And we're here for three more breaths. You're still engaging your left glutes. You're still engaging your left hamstrings. You're moving your left thigh bone closer to the ground. One more strong exhale here. And now release your left toes back down to the ground. Slide the props out from underneath you. Bring both hands to the floor. And now step your right leg back to meet your left leg. Take a huge inhale here and high push up. Exhale, lower to chaturanga. Inhale, flow it into your up dog. Exhale, press it back slowly to your downward facing dog. Inhale, float the left leg to the sky. And exhale, step your left foot slowly through your hands. Slide your right toes back. Bring the bolster back underneath your arms. Moving into a low lunge here again. If you need to, you can stack several, right? Let's try to get off of your wrists here. Turn your toes a little to the left. Walk your left foot more to the left if you need to. You're still hugging to midline here. Both inner thighs actively engaged. Keep your neck soft. Letting the weight of your head draw down towards your forearm. Although your neck is soft, your abs are strong. Two more breaths. 
Now slowly lower that right knee down. Determine if you're gonna need a, a prop underneath your knee. You may need it already, right? You're gonna come up, both hands to the left thigh. We're gonna start on the right kneecap so you can feel the difference when we get off of that kneecap. Now, some of us might feel the stretch here already, right? You don't need to do anything else if you're already feeling this, except make sure that your hamstrings and glutes stay contracted. So if you're already feeling a tremendous, pretty good stretch on that right front thigh, the front of your right thigh, feel free to stay here, right? If you would like to go a little further, and by the way, if you lean back, you're gonna feel it more with the kneecap on the floor too. Okay, so stay there if you'd like. Otherwise, push down with your hands into your left thigh and bring your right knee up. Establish the left hamstring so that it is parallel with the floor to the best of your ability. Reach back through your right heel. But once you feel that, go ahead and bend the right knee without the knee coming back down to the floor. But really make sure that your glutes and your hamstrings are fired. This is not a maybe because the knee will take it if we don't. Inhale, extend the leg straight. Push back through the inner heel. Exhale, bend the knee, contract your left glutes. Let your legs shake, it's fine. It just means your muscles are working. One more time, extend the right leg straight. Deep inhale, one more exhale, engage your glutes, engage your hamstrings. Dial the left foot bell back, point your right hip bone forward, hug both inner thighs to midline. Beautiful, and now slowly bring that right knee down, gently, gently. Roll off of your kneecap onto the muscle fibers above the knee. If you feel like you cannot get off of that kneecap, bring one of your pillows underneath the knee. I still want you to roll off of the knee. See how my knee is actually behind the pillow? So that the muscle fibers of the quads are on the pillow. That's where I want you to go with this. Good. And then come as far forward as you can. Coming onto your forearms if possible. Either stay right here or start to bend your right. You don't even have to bring your heel in very close to feel this. Engage your right hamstrings, engage your right glutes, move your right thigh bone closer to the floor. If you start to feel nauseated at all here, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> it's very normal. Please make sure you're exhaling. You may want to exhale through your mouth a few times just to symbolically kind of get that energy flowing, right? Again, if you'd like to, you could reach around and take a hold of your foot. I'm not ready for that. I have quite a stiff body myself. So I'm just gonna isometrically keep contracting these right hamstrings. Right calf is kicking back isometrically. Right glutes are firing here as well. One more inhale. Exhale to slowly release your right toes back down. Bring your palms back onto the mat, onto either side of your left foot. Slide your bolsters out of the way here. And step your left foot back to meet your right foot, high push up. Good, exhale down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, let your spine undulate so that the last part of your spine to come up with your neck and your head. And exhale, and kind of slowly unravel into your downward facing dog. Take another deep breath in here. Exhale all the air out. Make sure you are entirely empty. And then please bring your knees back down to the mat on your next inhale. Extend your spine. Walk your knees out wide. Bring your toes, not necessarily touching, but close together. And then bring your hips towards your heels for child's pose. Walk your arms forward. Drop your heart down. If this is really uncomfortable, you can take a puppy pose instead. If you are going to take puppy, your knees can still be wider than your hips, but your heart is dropping down while the pelvis stays high. Notice where you feel this stretch and make sure you are breathing to that stretch. It depends on what pose you're in. Right? If you're in that spinal extension in puppy, you're going to breathe to the front of your body while your abs are stretching. If you are in child's pose, you will be breathing to your lower back while the back is stretching. Your exhale in your rounded back position comes from your abs. Your exhale from your extended spine position comes from 
knitting those back ribs in toward the spine. Feel your spine muscles helping you exhale. Good, take one more breath in this resting posture. And with a very strong exhalation, go further in whatever way that means to you. Right, just know that we're looking, when we say further, we mean a letting go of even more tension in the body. And then slowly come back up onto the hands and knees. Good, we're gonna cross our shins now, sit back behind our heels and bring the legs forward. As you bring your legs forward, <clears throat> you may want to sit on a, on a pillow. Actually, let me show you the side view of this one more time before I face you. So if you sit on a pillow, it's just gonna propel your torso forward more. Right, so if we are someone who in a forward fold tends to feel like we're reaching from behind our pelvis, sit on that pillow, it'll, pillow, it'll really help. Not pillow, by the way. <laughs> we're gonna start in John Yersha Shasana, and I'm gonna go ahead and have you mirror what I'm doing for the next little bit. So you're gonna bring your left foot inside your right inner thigh, extend your right leg straight out in front of you, Right out of your hip. Take an inhale to sweep the arms overhead. As you exhale, dive over your right, your right leg. Bringing your forehead to your right shin. Send breath into your lower back here. And here's what we're gonna do to make sure that that lower back is supported. We're gonna push our left foot into our right inner thigh. We're going to push the right inner thigh back into the pressure you're feeling from your left foot. As you push these two parts of your body, body isometrically together, you'll feel the lower and inner core tone, right? When you feel that lower belly toning, you can go further and you really can go further. Once you feel the abdominals engage, your back will let go of some tension. We are not pulling, forcing, yanking, expecting to go further but do allow yourself to go further. Allow that internal contraction to take you deeper into Dhanu Shoshasana. Perhaps bringing your forehead closer to your right shin. Breathe to where you feel the stretch. Push your foot into your thigh, push your thigh back into that pressure. If you need to, you can keep your left inner uh, bicep just pushing onto your left outer thigh, I'm sorry, right inner arm pushes into your right outer thigh so that you can actually make sure you are pushing your inner thigh into your foot. Notice how that activates your core. Good, now reach past your toes and rise up slowly. Inhale. Good. And as you exhale, we're gonna bring both hands down. Bring your left foot now to stand so that the sole of your left foot is on the floor. You don't need to necessarily slide it in any closer. Just find a comfortable place for your left knee. So if this feels too pinchy on the left knee, just slide the foot further forward. It doesn't really matter. We won't, we'll, I'll show you why later. We're gonna start with this left arm now. You're gonna reach forward with your left arm. You're gonna bring your left knee and push it against the arm now. And push your arm back into your left knee. You'll notice again, your lower abs are gonna work a little harder for you even when you're doing that. But notice the stretch that you're already feeling here. Without going any further, notice the stretch you're already feeling in the back of your body. Then if you would like to go further, turn your palm out toward the left. Bend your left elbow so that your left fingertips are pointing toward your left sit bone. Stay right there if you'd like to with your right hand still on the floor or reach around with your right hand and clasp your hands together. Bring your forehead toward your right shin again. Notice there is a stretch happening. Where is it? And can you get your breath into that stretch? We are inhaling for at least five seconds here. We are exhaling for at least as long as we're inhaling, if not longer. Let every exhalation draw you deeper and maybe you hold empty at the end of your exhalation. Finding Uddiyana Bandha to support you in a deeper stretch. Check in with your neck, shake your head and move it side to side. Take one final exhale here, dive a little deeper, engage your right quadriceps strongly. Front of your right thigh have to engage here. And very slowly, let's unravel. Sweep the arms up. Good. And now we're gonna take our right elbow, wrap it around the left knee. Take your left hand back behind you. Root the sole of your right foot forward, engage those right quads, and move into a twist. 
again, it's going to be really tempting to just turn your head over your shoulder and let nothing else happen down in this area, right? We have all of these vertebrae, and usually in a twist, we're just bringing out our neck. So let your head just stay forward for a sec. Drop the elbow, engage your core. Root down with the sole of your left foot. Push forward with the sole of your right foot. Activate your inner thighs and hug to midline. Feel how that inner strength is going to actually fire up the lower belly again. Use that fired up lower belly to start breaking out your lower spine. Now take another inhale and lift your rib cage. Your floating ribs up away from the pelvis here. Exhale, push the elbow. Maybe you get the elbow to the outside of the knee now, at least a little bit more. Then we begin, we begin to extend our spine up as we exhale our ribs fully to the left side. So the entire rib cage is moving to the left. Now go ahead and turn your head to look over that left shoulder so that the neck follows rather than leads. Inhale to slowly unravel. Good, lean back. Pick up this left foot. In fact, you may want to start with your hands back behind the left leg. And now pick up your right leg. And balance here. Hug your inner thighs to midline. If you feel like you can, you're going to reach your arms past your left leg. Doing a little core work here to just raise our core temperature again, just in case we got a little chilly there in some of those deeper, uh, uh, deep stretches. Take one final inhale here. But as you exhale, we're going to switch sides. Extend your left leg straight. Bring the sole of your right foot in to the inner thigh of your left leg. Flex your left foot. Push your left, right foot into your left inner thigh. Push your left inner thigh back into that pressure. Reach the arms overhead. Exhale, dive over your left leg here. Hamstring stretch for sure. Lower back stretch, absolutely. Look for the opposing muscle groups or really the supported muscle groups here. If your hamstrings are stretching, your quadriceps engage. If your lower back is, is rounding, your abdominals engage. If your neck is stressed out, engage Jala Narabandha, engage the muscles of your throat. And it's almost like you're swallowing while you are holding your in-breath. That's the easiest way to find Jala Narabandha. Hold your, take a deep breath in, hold the in-breath, and then swallow while you're holding your in-breath. And you'll feel actually the same kind of bandha that you feel in the belly, but for the month, for the uh, cervical spine instead of your thoracic spine. Three more breaths here. Push foot into thigh, push thigh back into foot so that you're also feeling mula bandha, the rising of the pelvic floor. Strong, long exhales, let your exhale, let Uddiyana Bandha draw you deeper. So once you are empty, engage that diaphragmatic uh, lock. On your final exhale, see if maybe your forehead really can touch your left shin. Keep pushing foot into thigh, thigh back into foot as you rise. So you feel plugged in to a much deeper source of support. And once the arms come up, take your hands down. Keep the chest open here. Keep the quadriceps strong. Good. Now we're going to bring the sole of the right foot to the floor here. Again, you can decide where for your knee, right, where your foot will be placed. Bring your right shoulder inside the, the right knee and then reach forward. Once you are reaching forward, push your knee into your arm and push your arm back into your knee. Activate your core. Hug both inner thighs to midline. Activate the core even more. Feel free to stay right there. Because again, you can feel this in your back, your quadratus lumborum. We're getting a nice stretch from the, see the left side of your lower back all the way up underneath your shoulder blades. But if you feel like you could go a little further, turn the left, right palm out to the right, bend your right elbow, point your fingers at your right sit bone. Take this left arm, reach around, clasp your hands together. This side view looks like that. Or if you're more flexible, you could be reaching to grab your wrist your uh, right wrist with your left hand. I'm not there, so I'm gonna keep just clasping my hands together. Again, you're, you're gonna notice that you're gonna kinda wanna sink over to the left side. Rather than that, please <clears throat> hug your inner thigh, especially left inner thigh, back to midline, and bring your forehead just a little closer to your left shin. Neck is relaxed, back is stretching, abs are strong, 
Keep rooting down to the sole of your right foot and pushing forward with the sole of your left. Take one more exhale here. Make sure that you are engaging your abs here. And then slowly, slowly unravel. Sweep the arms back up. Lengthen out. And exhale, wrap your left elbow around your right knee. Bring your right hand back behind you. Before you twist with your neck, find your roots. Root down with the sole of your right foot. Root forward with the sole of your left foot. Engage your left quad still here. Hug both inner thighs to midline. Feel that inner body, inner lower belly engage. Engage as long as you can while you're exhaling. And let that take you into your twist. Inhale, draw the ribs up now. Away from the pelvis. Lengthen out the mid spine. Exhale, ring out so much so that maybe the elbow can come to the outside of the thigh instead. One more time with the shoulders still down away from the ears. Lift your sternum. Let the heart rise. And now exhale, ring out by turning your head to look over your shoulder. Your head is following the rest of your spine. Mobilizing the entire spine on your exhalation. Go ahead now very slowly. Let's unravel out of that. Uh, extend your right leg up and hold your hands back behind your right thigh here. You can lift up. You're going to sit back so that you're balancing on your sit bones, not your sacrum. And lift your left leg up as well. Breathe here. Hug in with both inner thighs. Once you feel like you've activated your core, do this without holding on to your right leg. Root both feet forward. Activate both legs here. Hug in isometrically. Imagine you have a yoga block between your thighs and you're hugging in. Point your sit bones toward that imaginary block. Take one final inhale here. Good. Exhale both legs down. Sweep the arms over your head. And exhale into Paschimottanasana, reaching past your toes, moving your forehead towards your shins. We are not straining. We are not pushing or pulling. We are allowing. There's a huge difference without expecting to go anywhere, maybe than here, right? We just inch our way forward, we allow ourselves to feel a little more, right? So if it's too much down here, if the back is rounding too much, start up higher, extend your spine, flex your feet, engage your quad, engage your abs, and then allow the abs to draw you further. One breath at a time, one sensation at a time, right? Knowing that the sensation will shift and change. It's not gonna stay there. It's not gonna be as intense. It might be more intense on the next one. It won't be the same, that's all we know, right? So there is transition. There is this transitory nature to our practice. And if we just breathe through it and allow all of that stuff to come up, you'll find that you'll, you actually will be able to let go of a lot more tension. And you will be able to allow yourself to go further, but with integrity. Not by forcing, but simply by engaging. Again, check in with your neck. Take one more exhale to dive just a little deeper into Paschimottanasana. Reach past your toes. Inhale, rise up. Extend your spine here. As you exhale, swivel your arms through your shoulders. Lean back and now point your fingers at your toes. You can point your toes somewhat forward as well. Spread your toes out and then kind of point them forward as well. If this is enough, stay right here. If you'd like to go a little further, both legs are going to come up this time. Work your abs. Work your abs with your exhale, right? Let your exhale make sure that you're drawing everything back. Three more breaths. Good. On your last inhale, please breathe into the back of your body more. Then on the exhale, draw your knees in. Make sure you do have enough of the yoga mat behind you. Draw your knees in and roll your spine slowly down to the ground. Draw your knees into your chest even further. I'm going to switch the view on this just one more time. But once you are lying onto your back, take one of your pillows or your block or your bolster or your rolled up sticky mat. We'll place it between your thighs. <clears throat> Make sure that your inner thighs are engaging for this one. Squeeze your inner thighs around that bolster. Even if your inner thighs start to shake, take your arms alongside your torso, inhaling here. 
Exhale, root down with your feet and lift your hips up for a bridge pose. We're gonna walk our arms underneath us today. Get off of the shoulder blades. Squeeze your block or whatever it is, right? With your inner thigh. And the most important part the, about this is the tractioning we're doing for our lower spine today. So we're not letting the butt drop down. We're not compressing our lower spine. Squeeze in, scoop the sit bones toward that prop, root down through your feet. Use the strength of your legs to traction your lower spine for you, right? So you can see the difference in my pose between this is not tractioning, right? And you can see that my lower back is taking most of the brunt of the weight of my body. My legs aren't doing a thing right now. Now I'm gonna squeeze with the inner thighs, contract the hamstrings, pull the pelvis forward so that you feel instead this tractioning forward, a lightening of the pose in the, in the direction of forward and up, right? And then check in with your neck. Make sure that there's neutral spine there as well. Chin usually needs to come up a little further away from your chest. Use this as a stretch today. Use this to stabilize and mobilize your spine today. This is a spinal extension, not a pinching up spine, right? Good, and then very slowly lower back down to the floor. We'll take the bolster out from between the knees. Notice how your legs just got a really good workout. <laughs> and they probably don't usually in a, in, a, in a bridge pose, but we really wanna feel that all the time in bridge, not just today. Once you're there, keep your left foot on the floor. Bring your right leg up and extend your right leg up to the ceiling. Flex your right foot here. Send some energy up to the right inner thigh. And as you exhale, move down with the sole of your left foot, pull the tips of your toes toward the wall behind you. It is going to be uh, tempting to hold on with your arm. I'm gonna have you, uh, in stiffer bodies, I like to, instead of using our arms, which kind of forces poses, just use your, your inner strength. The strength of your quads, the strength of your shins, the strength of the, of the transverse abdominal. And now begin to bring your right leg out to the right. Bring your right hand underneath the right shin, keep rooting down with the sole of your left foot, but start to open the left knee out to the left so that your left glutes are still on the floor. And your left arm is also reaching to the left. In other words, we're anchoring our left glutes our left hand and our left shoulder blade to the floor. If it feels more comfortable to just roll onto the outer edge of your left foot, please feel free to take that pose as well. Now, meanwhile, this right inner thigh is stretching. So we're gonna send some energy from the right inner glute, the right inner thigh through the inner knee, through the inner shin, rooting through the inner edge of your right foot even more. Breathe into all of that leg. Send your breath beyond the belly button into the front of your pelvis and into the right hip socket. As though your right leg were taking a breath with you. One more inhale here. As you exhale, place the sole of your left foot back down to the floor. Use your right arm to bring your right leg back up over your head. Flex the right foot again. Now go ahead with your right hand gently pressing in. See if the leg can come in any closer. We are not forcing the stretch. Right? A lot of us get stiff because we injure ourselves and we get scar tissue around that injury. Not, we don't need to injure ourselves here. We just need to see what the potential is, right? Good. And then from there, let's cross the right ankle to the top of the left thigh. Point your right knee away from you. And I mean really away, not just in line with your heel, but further forward of your heel if possible. Take an inhale here, check in with this right hip area. Make sure you can feel that the right hip bone and right thigh bone are staying away from each other. They're not touching, they're not even anywhere close. Now, if you want to go further and you don't need to, if you already feel the stretch here, right, by keeping that right knee tracking to the right, like it, at a diagonal line, then stay right there. If you feel like you need a better stretch, you're going to pick up your left foot, you're going to keep that right knee moving forward. And as the left knee comes in, go to where you feel the best stretch. Okay, for your lower back, as well as for your hips. Now, if you find that this knee is gonna keep creeping in, take your right hand to the right inner thigh, gently, without pushing it away, gently keep it where, where it is, okay, as you bring the left knee in. 
but breathe and make sure that the right hip and the right thigh bone are not touching. You can bring your left hand back behind your left thigh and bring it in. Good. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, bring your forehead up toward your right toes. Notice how my right knee just came in quite a bit. I'm gonna keep it moving away. I'm gonna keep that space between hip bone and thigh bone open. Take one more deep breath in. And one more strong exhale to see if maybe the left knee can come in a little closer while the right knee continues to move away. And then release your left foot down, cross your right knee over your left knee, and draw your knees over to the left. But now we're going to take a little more time with our neck now that the weight of our head is being supported by the earth. So let's turn our head to look over the right shoulder. Bring your right ear closer to the ground. Doesn't it? You don't have to force the ear to the ground to see, <clears throat> right, if it'll go any closer. And then from there, you're going to bring, oh, sorry, my knee's in the wrong direction. Once your ear is as close to the floor as possible, feel with this left arm how to increase that stretch. So all we're going to do right now is just lift the palm, the palm up toward the side, the back of your hand comes up, and then reach further away. Now, as you put the, palm, the back of your hand back down to the floor, you're going to increase the stretch for sure. And then slowly just start sweeping your hand down towards your knees a little more. If that increases the stretch for you, stay right there. Or maybe we need to sweep the arm up above the shoulder a little more. Wherever you feel that there is the most stretch on your neck, stay right there. Breathe into that. If you need to, you can lift your hand up again and reach your fingers further away from you. And I found my stretch, I'm breathing into it, making me a little nauseated again. I might take an exhale through the mouth. Just to again decide that we're moving energy out. Squeeze those inner thighs together and draw your sit bones towards your knees here. Take one final exhale, lay the back of your left hand back down to the floor if it's not there already. Really, truly bring out your spine so that your right shoulder blade is on the ground. You should feel like there's more mobility than usual for sure here. So again, just allow yourself to maybe bring out a little further. And now bring your head up, your gaze is directly to the sky. Uncross your legs. Bring the soles of your feet to the floor. Take an inhale here to extend your spine. And then exhale, gently release your spine into the support of the ground. Once it's there, inhale your left leg to the sky. And we're breathing, right? Sending the breath up the back of the left leg. Pull your toes back. Engage your left quads. Engage your left, your, your left abdominals. Engage all of the abdominals. Not just the left one. Pull your toes back over your head as possible while rooting down with this right foot. Make sure that the breath is really working here. So we're not just taking really quick breaths. We're not thinking of other things. Close your eyes if you need to. Spend some time with your left hand straight. Take one more exhale, see if maybe the toes can come a little further back. And we're gonna to start to open the left leg out to the left. Reach up with your left hand. Let your left hand be there as the left leg drops into your hand. And then you're either keeping the sole of your foot on the ground and opening the right knee very, very, just a little bit, right? So that your left glutes come back down. Your palm, your right palm is on the floor. I'm sorry, your right glutes are on the floor. Your right hand is on the ground and your right shoulder blade is on the floor. If it feels better to just take your knee even further to the right, and come onto the outer edge of your foot instead, left right foot instead. And meanwhile, your left foot is rooting toward the left wall. Breathe into the left side of your pelvis. Breathe into the left hip socket. Breathe through the left inner thigh, inner knee, inner shin, inner ankle. Root through the inner edge of your left foot even more. Make sure you're not rolling all of your weight over to the left. Your right glutes and your right shoulder blade are still on the ground. Please breathe as deeply as you possibly can. And on your next exhalation, see if maybe you can root the foot even further, engage a little outer thigh strength. Keep your left hand where it is and begin to coax your left leg back in the center. And once you get there, place the sole of your right foot back down on the floor. Cross your left ankle to the top of your right thigh. 
and move your right knee away from you as far away as possible. Feel the, the, the distance between your left hip bone and your left thigh bone. Breathe into that space. If this feels like enough of a stretch, stay here and just keep tracking that knee away from you as though you're trying to point it into the left corner of the room. If you would like to go further, pick your right foot up. If you need to, you're going to bring your left hand and just keep not pushing the leg, right? But just simply noticing where the knee can get on its own and then maintaining it there with your hand on your inner thigh. You can reach up, take a hold of the back of your right thigh with your right hand, bring your uh, forehead up to meet your left toes. This is my stretch for today because if I go any further, this knee's going to come forward. Okay, so I want to keep that space between hip bone and thigh bone. If I can keep the knee there by itself, I can also reach with both arms back behind the right thigh and lift up a little higher. See how the knee wants to come in? <laughs> but keep pressing it away. Two more breaths here. One more deep breath in, get all the way up off of your shoulder blades. And now release your head back down. Extend your arms up, bring your right foot to the floor, cross your left knee over your right and roll over to the right side. Open your chest to the sky. Turn your head to look over your left shoulder. And then with your arms reaching out and your head turned to the left, we're going to allow the knees to get closer to the floor. Take your right hand up off the floor. Reach your right arm even more to the right. So keep reaching to the right as you lower the top of your hand to the ground. Already, I feel like I've hit my edge right there. That's my sweet spot, so I'm gonna stay right there. I'm gonna breathe into this, try to relax the shoulder blade down even more, but keep reaching your right fingertips more to the right. You may find you need to, to sweep the hand down a little closer to the knees. You may find you need to bring the hand up a little further, maybe even above the shoulder. And you may find that you need to keep your hand off the ground and keep reaching. Meanwhile, your left ear is getting closer to the floor. Your left shoulder blade is resting comfortably on the ground. Squeeze those inner thighs together. Draw your sit bones towards your knees. Hollow out the belly. Feel the stretch increase on the left side of your lower back here. One more deep breath in. And one more exhale to really reach through the right arm. Increase the stretch on the right side of your neck. See if the left ear can come any closer to the ground. And slowly now rotate your head up so that your gaze is at the ceiling. You can keep your eyes closed here. Uncross your legs, bring your feet up off the floor and just rock side to side across your back. And after rocking side to side a few times, bring your knees a little further forward until eventually you can place the soles of your feet to the ground. Take your hands right to the base of your soul. Lift your head up and then let your head fall back into your hands. Keep rooting down through the soles of both feet. Use your arm strength here and use the heels of your hands right at the base of the skull, right either side of the base of the skull. First of all, let your head weigh heavy into your hands. So your arms feel, your biceps are, are engaging, okay? Pull the crown of your head back. Use your arm strength. Use the heels of your hands at the base of your skull, either side of the base to pull the base of your skull away from the top of your spine. Do that without engaging your neck muscles. We're trying to relax our neck. Your head is weighing heavy into your hands. If all of a sudden your biceps feel like they're not doing anything, it means your neck is taken over. It's like we're doing our own little traction machine for our neck here. Take one final inhale. As you exhale, slide your hands out from underneath you and point your elbows out from underneath the base of the skull, point your elbows toward the sky. Without bringing the chin in very close to the chest, unless you do have that flexibility, just bring your head up, bring the shoulder blades up, feel your core engage. And now, see how close perhaps your chin can come into the top of your chin. Very slowly, let's roll the spine down. Bring the back of your head to the floor with your chin as far away from your throat as possible. And then bring your arms down alongside your torso. Extend your legs beneath you. 
You may want to lift one hip and then the other. You may want to shake out your legs or your arms. And roll right into your final resting pose today. Shavasana. If it feels like you're just not comfortable in Shavasana, please feel free to take any other movement or yoga pose of choice. We're running slightly over today, so I just want to make sure I'm finishing somewhat on time. But please go ahead and do whatever you need to do to make sure you are comfortable. Once you do move into Shavasana. Make sure that your breath is relaxed as well and becoming very subtle. And once you do allow yourself to move into your, to that deep rest, let everything that is holding you back from resting fully and completely just fall away. As we know, as we are all experiencing, this is a quieter time in our lives. We have a lot less feedback from the people around, the people, you know, maybe at work or at, at our yoga studio or at the whatever, wherever we go, right? We have a lot of, a lot less interaction and a lot less people telling us who we should be and what they need us to be. We're playing a lot less roles these days. When we're playing less roles and we are playing and we are not needing to be a certain way for a certain group of people, but we're only with ourselves and with our, you know, our closest, we get to tune into our inner knowing. So I'd like to end with this quote by Jeff Brown. <clears throat> he says, when we're quiet, we then can trust a hint or a whisper of our own truth but it's that trusting, right? Same way we trust our inner strength. We trust the hint or the whisper of truth. And then we trust a slight breeze against our cheek, inviting us in a new direction, that's subtle. This is the hard phase when you have yet to validate your intuition with actual experience. This is when you need to hang tight and do everything possible to keep your faith afloat, to keep tuning in to your inner knowing, the quiet voice of your inner knowing, the hint or the whisper of truth, the subtle suggestion of a slight breeze against your cheek can tell you what direction to go next. Eventually the inner message becomes more direct, more seamless, indistinguishable from your very breath. That's when you have become your intuition. That's when you find true path everywhere you step. The bridge that gets you from faith to certainty is built with heartfelt determination. We have time these days, right, to trust the hint or the whisper of our truth path. We have the time to notice that slight breeze against the cheek or whatever it is that your body is telling you in that subtle way that it does. So I challenge you to, just as we are learning how to rely on our inner strength, rely on those inner messages. Start to listen for them, feel for them, perceive of them. While you have these quiet moments to yourself. Please feel free to stay in Shavasana. I'm going to um, say goodbye. So if you would like to, you can roll to one side and move into your fetal position. From fetal position, come up into a comfortable seated pose. Bringing your hands to your heart. Notice how you feel in your body, how your neck and your back feel, how the sides of your torso feel, how your breath feels. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.
Thanks, you guys. I just unmuted all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your evening, and hopefully we'll Thank see you again you. soon. Thank you. Take care. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much. I didn't have to wait too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.